Hey guys and dolls, today I'm going to be sharing with you a wedding guest makeup tutorial. When you're invited to a wedding, there's so many things that are going through your mind, taking time off work and, and you know, maybe you have to travel for the wedding or what you might want to get the couple as a gift and just all kinds of things. And one of the questions that I get asked all the time is what is a good makeup to wear to a wedding? And while I think that there could be so many different factors with that, like what time of day the wedding is and how formal the wedding is and what your dress looks like, of course, I wanted to show you guys sort of a universal look, something that's going to look good on everyone, so Something that's neutral, something that's gonna look great in photographs, and something that is classic but isn't too um, like vintage looking or anything like that either. Just completely classic, something that you're gonna be proud to wear today, something you're gonna look good in in photographs forever. So that is this look today that I'm gonna be sharing with you. I'm going to be using the Naked Basics and N Naked Basics 2 palette to create this look, although I really only use a highlight from this. So really, it's all about the Naked Basics 2 palette. I also am gonna be showing you guys my full foundation routine to kind of just give you guys all of that information. It also works really well for homecoming. So for those of you who are headed to homecoming this year, Year. This is a really great beautiful look that you are not going to regret. It's not a super trendy look. You know that when you see your photos and you know 15 years you're going to go, oh god, why did I wear that? Because a lot of my school dance photos are like that. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, if you do, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'm also going to have a link to my other tutorials in the description box down below if you want to check those out. I also want to mention really quick before we get started that in a couple of days I'm going to have a video showing what to wear in terms of your dresses and things like that to a wedding because I know that the etiquette of finding a dress to wear as a guest to a wedding can be kind of crazy. We all know certain rules like don't wear white, but there are so many old-fashioned rules that are no longer valid. There are some of those rules that we do need to follow and I think that it's kind of fun because weddings are one of those last few formal events you know we're so casual anyway I'm um, over explaining that video will be up in a couple of days and let's go ahead and get started on the tutorial so I'm getting started with my eyebrows and today I'm using two different products I'm starting out with the Milani eyebrow tint in I think it's called natural taupe and if you hear some rustling it's my dress it's very rustly kind of a very grand dress to be sitting here doing my makeup in, but it works, so it's fine. So I'm using the Milani Brow Tint Pen to sort of draw the color where I already have eyebrows, but I just want it to be a little bit of like a tint behind the natural brow shape just to fill in any bald spots. Then I'm going to go in with the pencil and I'm going to define it, so I'm going to use that on the outer edge here to create some like little brush strokes. I will really define the outer edge with the pencil. I'm going to draw the tail a bit with the pencil as well. Lately I've been using these two together and I really like the natural look that it gives. For my primer today I'm using the NARS Smudge Proof Pro Primer and I'm just going to get a little bit of that on my lid and then blend it out. This makeup is for an event, so you really want it to last and be, you know, as long lasting as possible. So I'm going to add a secondary base. I'm going to use a pencil all over the lower portion of my lid. This is Milani's Liquify Pencil in Graphite. It's really great, uh, like shimmery gunmetal. Not really gunmetal. It's a bad term. Um, it's graphite colored. That's cheating because that's the name of it. Whatever. We'll move on. I'm going to blend that out with my finger a little bit, just kind of pat it, and then smudge. Make sure to get that off your fingers. Now I'm going to do a layer of a matte texture eyeshadow. This is from the Naked Basics 2. The color shade is called Undone. Oh, that's weird. Isn't there one called Undone in the Vice 2 palette? Hold on. There is. That's kind of dumb. I didn't even realize that. Okay, so I'm going to use Undone from the Naked Basics 2 palette, and I'm going to place that all over the lid on top of our eyeliner squeebs. And this color is pretty darn pigmented. You really don't need too much of it. Just a couple pats and you'll be able to blend it out from there. What I like about this is it's a wonderful charcoal matte. It's not black. It's not too cool of a gray either. It's a little bit of a brown gray. Love this color. So now I'm going to pick up a little bit of cover on that 217 brush and I'm going to blend that in that outer corner. Just right in the outer little squeeps. 
What we're doing here is we're creating a truly neutral color combination because this is a slightly warmer toned, you know, of these two browns, which are kind of similar, in, you know, in depth, but this one is definitely just a hint lighter and definitely warmer. Because it's warmer and the lid shade is a bit cooler, oh, almost dropped it, but I didn't. Anyway, I'm like trying to get out what I'm trying to say and I'm, I keep having issues. Because the two colors are slightly different in undertone, one is a little cooler, one's a little warmer, but neither one of them is so warm or so cool, we're getting a truly neutral makeup look that will go with anything. So really, really great little palette here because even though it is, you know, gray toned overall, it's very grayed out, but it's not totally warm or cool. The next thing I'm going to do is grab a little bit of Stark. And I'm going to blend that right on the edge of cover. This one's quite a bit lighter, a little bit of like a peachy kind of color. And if you're a medium to deep skin tone, take this all the way up and use this as your brow, highli brow highlight. That's a word. Uh, if you are fairer like me, I'm going to use a lighter one just above this as well. It has a beautiful gradient and that's the whole point is this is that it's really really easy to do it doesn't require a ton of skill to do a basic gradient smoky eye like this but you know it looks beautiful it looks elegant in any situation I'm gonna go ahead and take walk of shame on a what is this a Sigma e50 brush and just highlight it out and now I kind of feel like my crease Kind of got rubbed away a little bit, so I'm just going to come in with this. And I'm going to do one more pass with Undone just to make sure that's nice and fully opaque before I leave it alone. Alright, I'm going to put in just a little bit of some black gel liner. And I'm just pressing that into my lash line. I don't want to make a big thing of it, but I just wanted to make sure I was covering any gaps so I didn't have like, you know, like a weird like light line. It's definitely a burden when you have lighter colored, either lighter colored skin or lighter colored eyelashes. You're always going to go in and like really make sure that you don't have any gaps when you do something like this. Otherwise you could just pretty much skip the eyeliner uh, if you don't have any weird gaps. So I just did that to kind of, you know, cover up the holes. Okay, I'm going to apply my CeraVe AM. I'm also going to apply a little bit of CeraVe PM in areas where my skin is very dry. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my foundation today. I'm going really basic. I'm going to use my IT Cosmetics CC Cream. I really love this stuff for just everyday foundation. It's so surprising that I didn't really care for it that much at first. And now it's my fave. So go figure. Just do a very light layer of this all over. Alright, so I'm mixing up my concealers once again. I'm mixing up Rose Radiance Prep and Prime Skin Highlighter from MAC and the Makeup Forever Full Coverage Concealer in the shade 3. Mixing them up on the back of my hand. This creates a really great little peach color. Just really great for my under eye situation. So, go ahead and apply a little bit of this. Like that. And then I will bring in a big brush like this to blend it out. Not really a big brush, just a round brush. Why is it big? Whatever. So blendy, blendy. Blendy, blendy. And because I'm trying to highlight with this, as well as conceal, I'm taking it down on my cheek a little bit. Change of blends, I'm going to now use the Sigma F64 to blend this out. The one wasn't really working out for me. So I'm just going to take this wherever I need a little bit more coverage. I'm going to get little red patches on my chin. Alright, 
and then for my powder today I'm going to use the Studio Care Blends Press from MAC. I don't even know if they sell this anymore to be honest with you. I found it in my drawer the other day from when I worked at MAC and I was like, oh yeah, that powder. So yeah, that's kind of the story behind why I'm using it. It's matte, which I like. But not too matte. It sort of takes the, the shine off the skin. It's also a wee bit... Uh, darker than my foundation, which sometimes is a little bit too light. So, I don't know, I'm trying it out. Using a little bit of dim light powder from Hourglass on oh, my cheeks is like a little bit of a bronzer, pale girl bronzer, if you will. For blush today, I'm going to go ahead and use the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic Blusher in Love Glow. This is the one that I said in my whole video reminded me a lot of NARS Orgasm. I think it's a little bit pinker and like um, maybe a little bit less intense compared to Orgasm on second look after using it a little bit more. It's really pretty with these gray smoky eyes. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a contour with the NYX Taupe Blush. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take my brow gel through my brows. What is that? There's like one little curly brow that is just not playing well with the rest of the class. I think I'm going to have to just snip it. Ugh. So annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes. Give them a little squeezy squeeze. Alright, and then for my mascara, I'm going to use the Clinique High Impact Mascara. And I need to get a mirror all up in it so I can see what I'm doing. it off the bottom lashes if it transfers a bit because I want to keep the bottom portion really clean because if you're at a wedding let's face it you're going to be crying I'm just taking an extra step to brighten up my under eye with the prep and prime uh what's it called radiant rose that's a bold move that I took just blending that out and looking down um, this is one of those really great little products that you can throw in your bag and then if you cry at a wedding or something you can you know obviously you know go to the bathroom and fix yourself up as much as you can but this is great because it has that highlighting effect so you can put this on over and kind of hide the fact that you've been crying. Not that crying at a wedding is a shameful thing but you know we all, we all want to look our best and there's always photos of these things and you know. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder tapping off the extra of that on a little tiny brush. Again, this is something you can keep in your bag for a touch up because this isn't a very large thing of powder. And I blend that out. Sorry, I'm using my viewfinder as a mirror. I know you guys hate that, sorry. Blend that out over the extra highlighter and then over that whole area a little bit. Cause otherwise you're gonna get this weird like powdered look right here in photographs. You wanna use this very, very sparingly. You guys, I put some on and really really tapped it off before I applied it on. You can also use this on other places on the face once you're done using it under the eyes. So like a little bit on the nose, a little bit on the chin, and that will make those areas look a little more bright in photos. But again, you want to use it sparingly. Don't use a lot of it. And then for lips, I'm going to do something pretty simple. I'm trying to find my lip balm. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lip balm. This is the Jack Black Shea Butter Lip Balm. I'm just going to put a little bit of it on my lips. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take Milani's Plum Rose Lipstick and I'm just going to get a little bit of that on my finger and blend it into my lips from there. It's going to make the color a little bit softer, a little bit sheerer. By applying it over lip balm and applying it with our fingers, we make the lipstick so much more sheer. It makes it a little bit softer. And this is also really important because 
you're gonna cry and when you cry you may or may not mess up your lipstick especially if you blow your nose or something after you cry or if you're wiping your face so you want to have a lipstick that's forgiving so I, I tend to like things that are a little bit lighter instead of going for like a really full hardcore lip color something that's super pigmented that's just me personally this is what I like to do because I happen to know that I'm gonna mess up my face and so I want something that's a little bit low maintenance in fact I was recently at a wedding and someone actually was like oh you're the makeup artist and I said yes yes I'm you know actually my sister in law's wedding and she was like wow you don't really wear a lot of makeup for a makeup artist which I thought was funny because if you guys know me I'm all about makeup or something an event like a wedding I do like to dial it back a little bit just because I don't want to have to fix everything I want to just you know do light touch-ups and just enjoy myself so I hope that this is helpful advice for those of you who are looking for something to wear to a wedding I know it's very daunting and kind of stressful to find out the etiquette of what to wear um, and this is just one thing that you can do and even some people would say this is too much and some people would say this is not enough so it's all about personal taste at the end of the day you could always dial this down a little bit bump it up you could add a little bit of the graphite liner over this to make it sparkly and shiny again and then add a little bit of like a glittery charcoal eyeshadow like this one from Milani and bump it up and make it a little bit more elegant for a black tie wedding. Weddings are a time when you can totally do a smoky eye as I've done here but I used a little bit lighter colors. I used charcoals and brown as opposed to black. I didn't go crazy with color. You certainly could wear something like purple or navy or even green. Um, I don't know that I would go all out with like bright bold colors. I don't think that a wedding is the time to go crazy with the lime green eyeshadow. I don't know maybe your friends are having that kind of wedding and then that's awesome and can we be friends because I want to go to that wedding. But generally speaking, weddings are a little bit more of a formal time, even when they're not particularly formal. If you know someone who's having a little, oh, sorry, my bra is showing. Even if you know someone who's having a less formal wedding, overall, there's still events in the wedding. There's still a certain, you know, there's still a certain formality to it. I think that weddings are one of those events where you want to look classic and elegant because you're going to be photographed, even if you're not part of the wedding. There will be photos, and you don't want to look at those photos in, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time and go, God, what was I thinking? You just want to think, you know, how, how young you looked, of course, <laughs> when you're looking back that far. But you're also going to just want to look at, you know, everyone as a whole and just, you know, it's just a good time to be classic, I would say. If you have any additional tips or comments or questions or anything, go ahead and leave them for us in the comment section below and we'll, we'll all join in on the discussion. I also want to invite you to check out my other tutorials. I will have a link in the description box down below to my makeup tutorials playlist. And I will see you guys in my next video. Remember to just be yourself. See you, bye.